Today, our goal is to download Final Cut Pro, get it up and running on my iPad, and start editing a project and seeing what my first impressions of it is. Now, going into this, Final Cut Pro already has one big con against it, and that is the only way for me to be able to use Final Cut Pro is using an M1 chip. And that means I can't use my Mini, and I can't use my Air, which I find to be more than funny because if you look at Luma Fusion and you look at DaVinci Resolve, both of those does everything Final Cut Pro do and you're able to leverage them on other devices. No, it's not, you're not getting all the features, but you can still leverage them to a certain degree. And the fact that Final Cut Pro don't offer that at all and I have to buy an M1 chip, yeah, that's a big con for me. Let's talk tech. All right, so now that everything has been successfully updated, I'm gonna try this one more time, double click it and I'm gonna download. Now this has built-in internet, so it really shouldn't take that long since it's got built-in cellular. See what it's about. All right, welcome to Final Cut Pro, continue. So we can do one month free yearly, or we can do five, four ninety nine. dollars choose our subscription. I think I'm gonna try it for one month free, and then if I like it, actually, I'm going to do I'm gonna do one month free, and if I like it, if I don't like it, I can always cancel it. But if I do like it, then I don't have to worry about canceling it. I'll just let the subscription continue on. I'll say OK. And it says Luminar New Year. Start adding with the demo project. I'm going to say not now. And now I have this right here. It has a project on here that I want to play around with. So I'm going to actually disconnect the charger and I'm going to plug this in. So I'm going to pull the file off here. All right. So we're going to see how easy it is. So I'm going to say. All right. So it says getting the most out of this course is the name of the project video video number zero. I'm going to say continue and the cool thing. OK, so I like the fact that I can import it from files or import it from photos, record camera. All right. So let's see here. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to say open. And what I want to see is if it's importing that from the device. And it actually looks like it is. It looks like that's a circle that's going around it, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Oh, yeah. OK, it is importing this. So I like this because with DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve leaves the files where they are. So if it's in the iCloud, you know, Apple do the thing they do with the photos. So if you pull in there from there, DaVinci Resolve, leave it there. You got to wait on those files to re-download before they link back up. So the fact that it's importing it into the software, I like that because it's not no duplicates. Normal Fusion do this as well. So, so far, so well. I like this part. All right. That upload didn't take long at all. So just looking at it, I'm going to disconnect that. And I'm actually going to put it back on a power source. Not that I really need it, but I'm going to put it back on there. And looking at it, okay, so the timeline, I see I can inspect right here. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's just... Okay, so I am back. We're going to be changing it up. So up until now, you've seen me upload, download the app and all that other cool stuff. But what I realized is after playing with this, I spent the better part of two hours trying to figure stuff out on video. So I decided to scratch that video. And what I decided to do is show you how to use the software, because the reality is this picking up the software like I did downloading and just trying to go with it and see how intuitive it is how easy it is and all that other stuff is going to be a very frustrating thing to do. And if you're not looking at any uh, Apple or Final Cut Pro documentation on the software, then I come to realize that's just not the best approach. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to give you the ultimate guide and show you around the software. And at the end, we can talk about what I like about it versus what I don't. And we're going to do that while we're while I'm giving you the layout of the land. So let's dig back into my computer. All right. So here we are and first things first you can see we already have this uploaded so we're going to just drop this on here to give us something to work with now the very first thing that i can honestly say it took me a little getting used to but i like it now is this right here so the jog wheel is this icon right here and i should note that when it comes to final cut pro on the ipad it is very much so a touch first experience meaning that if you're using your fingers or you're using the Apple Pencil, you're going to have much more enjoyability from editing and using this specific app. It is not a keyboard shortcut first, and you're going to see why I say that in just a moment, okay? 
So really quickly, starting with from left to right, we have the inspector. In the inspector, if there's anything you want to do as far as like changing your frames out or scale to fit or doing anything with your audio or your effects, all of that's going to be in the inspector. Now, if you're coming from Final Cut Pro, all of this is normal to you. With me not coming from Final Cut Pro, this was one of the bigger adjustments I had to get used to. You have your volume controls right here. And when this volume control right here is active, Activated, you can see you can keyframe it but when this is activated you have this right here where you can hit a plus button and you can come over some let's grab this let's reactivate that and when we take it up we can take it up as up to 12 db if we want to we can turn it off and we can see once we turn it off we can see everything is peaking as far as the claps go but honestly we don't want it up 12 db we can probably take it up maybe five decibels or something like that but once we click on volume you can see that goes away and we get these controls back. Animation is exactly what it sounds like if we want to do something with keyframing or something like that. We have a few things we can do right here. We also can change the range and edges if we want to. We have multicam right here, which is kind of cool. It's baked into the software. And from my understanding, it looks easier to use this than in LumaFusion. Now, don't quote me because LumaFusion charges like I think an extra 20 bucks or something like that. And I didn't pay for it because, well, I don't think I'll ever be doing multicam on an iPad. I would probably just grab my laptop for that. But you do have it on here. And I can't really say apples to apples which one is better, but I do like the simplicity of this right here that Final Cut Pro is offering. So that's that. Over here, this is your trash can to delete it. Your checkbox just allows you to deselect things, but you want to always have this selected because if it's not selected, it won't be active. So I'm going to say done over here. Right here, as far as it goes for deleting things, we can split the clip right here. So let's come over here. I'm gonna actually close out this inspector. I'm gonna use two fingers to zoom in. I'm using my trackpad. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right here and we can click right here, put it right here. This is gonna split it in half. When I click this, click delete, it automatically moves it over. Now, if I wanted to delete this portion of it because I don't want it, then I could just come here. And what I could do is click on the clip. The clip has to be selected. And I'm gonna click right here. And this is saying delete everything on the left side. So I'm gonna delete that. And you can see it deletes it and it closes up that gap. Now, if I wanted it to do the opposite side, I could, let's say here, I'm going to split the clip just to make it easier to show you. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna activate this. And let's say I want to delete this right here. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on this one. And you're going to see it's going to get rid of it. Easy peasy. Now, for this one, I want to zoom in because I know in actuality, I want to find the last clap because that's where it actually starts at. So I can zoom into this. Click right here because that's where I want it to go. Activate it. And once I activate it, I can click right here. And I didn't want to do that. So Command Z to undo. Reactivate. Click on it. And this is the one I want to click right here, which gets rid of everything. And now when we close it up, we don't see any issues. Now, because we are editing this, you have to edit this like a normal editor would edit, meaning that if you're splitting a clip, you want to split where you want it. And then you want to use that ripple delete. If you don't, what's going to happen is this. If I click right here, Let's say I wanted to delete this right here. We can zoom in because I see a breath right here. So if I click right here and I go over here to split clip and then I come right here and I click on split clip, look what's happening. This right here is staying active and I have to come back over here, reactivate this. Then I have to delete it and then I have to come back over here and click on that. That's not the proper way to edit. What we would do is we would click right here. We would bring our playhead to right there. We will split that clip. And then after that, we will come over here and we would ripple delete and that would line it up. Now, if we wanted to, we could use the jog wheel. This is where the jog wheel come in. So let's say I put my playhead over here. Right now I'm using my finger to fine tune where the cursor is. And then I'm using 
this to split the clip. Now, if I wanted to bring it over some more and I wanted to make sure I'm fine tuning it, I can pinch in. Okay, I wanna try and do that. I can pinch in, zoom into the clip like so. And now what I can do is I can fine tune wherever I want that, that next cut to be, which would be about right there. Then I can click it to activate it and then I can ripple delete which now keeps this window active. So this is the way that you're going to want to edit when you're doing, when you're using this. And honestly, again, it's a touch experience first. If you're using the Apple Pencil in your hand, you're gonna, it's gonna be more enjoyable than using keyboard shortcuts. That's just the way it is in Final Cut Pro so far. All right, now the next thing you might wanna do, which is what I would do since these clips are cut, what I would do normally is I would come back to the beginning right here, and the first thing we would wanna do is I have auto scrubbing turned off. So if yours is on, it's right here. Auto scrubbing is just, is not making a sound when I'm moving this playhead around. And then over here, you also have a few more options like snapping. If you don't like snapping, you can turn that off. Position, I have that turned off. And then you have skimmer playhead. And then you have right here. So I'm assuming skimmer playhead, if I turn that off, I'm assuming that now I don't have a, you know that line that normally come, I don't have it no more. So I have to come over here and click it. But with skimmer playhead on, if I come back over here, I get my line back. So now I get my line back and I could just click where I want the playhead to go. And I like this better because it allows me to fine tune and I don't have to guess where it's at. So I like this. Now, the next thing over here that you will want to see is appearance. And this allows us to close and open it up. Like I like to have mine pretty open so I can see everything. So I like to keep it like that. But if we have a lot of video clips, then that could become unwieldy very quickly. So we would just close it up a little bit like so. But for right now, that's how I'm going to keep it. And the first thing I'm going to do, because what I would normally do is I will want to color correct this video. Now, my white balance is fairly on point, but you can see my shirt is highlights. I want to take that off. My skin tones, I want to bring down the tones up in here. So before I do that and show you how I do that, first, I want to show you this row up here because we need to get familiar with it. This button right here just shows us our project media. This right here is our effects tab. So we have effects, we have transitions, titles, backgrounds, objects, and sound track and soundtracks. Now, within our effects window, everything that we do over here. So for example, let's do this really quickly. We're going to do a color adjustment on this clip, drop and drag. We're going to probably do a hue and saturation, drop and drag, and we're going to do a colorize, drop and drag. All right. So where is it? I'm sorry, not a colorize. We're going to do vibrance and we're going to drop and drag. Now, what we want to do is, and we can move this wherever we want to, but if we're not using it at the moment, we could just turn it off. So what I want to do is come back down to the inspector. Nothing's going to pop up. I'm going to click on the clip and I'm going to go over to this tab right here, which is where we would control our effects at. And you can see right here, here's our color adjustment. So we can use masks, but I found that the masks are not, they're not there yet. So honestly, I probably wouldn't waste my time trying to use a mask because they're not, they're, they're very, very basic. And honestly, they're not, you know, yeah, they're not there yet, in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out the effects tool so I can see this image a little bit clearer. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down this. But before we do that, this is a pro app. So we do have a few pro features when it comes to being able to color correct. So I'm going to click right here. And in here, you get picture in picture, you get full screen, you get view playback. My my viewer playback, which is the video was sitting behind this video. If I made it small, is black, white, or checkerboard. Right now, it's set to black. That's the standard. You can have your guides as well as your safe, your safe area if you want it. It's 100% up to you. And after that, what I want to do is come down here to video scopes, and we're going to use waveform. You also have your vector scope as well and your histogram which is right here. Now for me, I mainly use 
my waveform when I'm doing this part because honestly there's no way for me to be able to you know just sample my skin tone so this is how I'm gonna do it with this and what I would do is now that I can see this see what I'm doing I could pull this down a little bit to get it up under the to get it right up under the 100 and then as far as my contrast I can if I pull my contrast I could bump my contrast up a little bit and then I'm gonna pull this down a little bit all right my brightness I want to bring my brightness down in the overall image just so that I'm trying to get some of that highlights trying to pull out some of that color out of there my saturation I'm going to probably leave it at 2.5. Now I can click right here and I can fine tune this. This is a Luma Fusion feature, which I'm happy they have it here because we can go up by stops if you want to, or you can just put in your precise number or subtract this 100% up to you, or you can reset and start over. All right. With my highlights, I want to pull my highlights down. So now you can look at my shirt and see it's looking more yellow. My skin tones is looking a little bit better. I'm still looking a little red. And then after that, you can see if I pull, these are my black points that I'm playing with. So I'm only playing with the darkest parts of the image. So if I pull this down, you can see now I'm looking more true to life of how I would really, how it really looks here in my studio. All right, so I would actually pull that up ever so slightly. And let's do this really quickly. I thought I had it on. All right, and now after that, what I would do is I would say for warm, I, I don't need to mess with warm, but if you wanted to, you can make it a little warmer or make it a little bit cooler. It's 100% up to you. If you don't like it, you just hit reset and it goes back to the original way it was. And then down here, you have your mid-tones. So if you wanted to do the teal and orange look or teal and green look or however it goes, this is where you do it, the highlights and then your shadows. And then you can put your mid-tones if you want to. So it's pretty cool. And then down here is where you can take it off and you can halfway mix your colors in so that you're not getting the full intensity but you're only getting half of it so i can tell you right now when it comes to color grading and final cut pro they got it right i i like this a lot is it better than davinci resolve heck you know not even close but does it fix the issues that i didn't like about color grading and luma fusion absolutely they got it right all right so now if we come back over here and we do a hue versus saturation, if I wanted to mess with the hue, I could. You can see it's not really doing much. So I really don't need to really mess with it. But I mean, honestly, if I wanted to, I could. So if I wanted to come down to saturation, I, you can see it's drastic changes, but we don't want it to be that drastic now. If I wanted to, I'm using my finger at this point. That's why you see the slider just moving again. It's a touch first experience. So something like that looks pretty good to me. And then if I come down here to vibrant, I could, let's see, I could turn it, turn it up a little bit or turn it all the way down, but I don't want to do that. And honestly, I really don't want to touch vibrance in this specific case. If I say protect skin tones, last time I tried it, it didn't work. It still messed with my skin tones, as you can see. So I'm going to hit reset on that, and I'm not going to touch that right there. So I really don't need that. And the cool thing about this is after you've got this done, you can disable all your edits if you want to. So if your device is moving slow, I can disable the color gray until I'm until it's finished, and then I can go back and reapply it. And the cool thing about it is if I wanted to, if I step back, if I copy this effect, it's not hard to take this effect and bring it over here to this video. All I have to do is come right here 
and I could say paste the fact, and it's just that simple. So I like that. Is 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 from that standpoint, it's really really simple. It's really really easy. Now I will say it would probably become cumbersome if you had to do this with every single video, uh, unless it's a different scene or something like that. So what I would do is I would do my color grading up front first. So now let's take a look at our audio because that's another thing that I would want to fix. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to go to audio. And with this right here, I can, I'm going to turn this up a little bit. I'm going to hit play. How's it going? Will here. And before we dive into module zero. Okay. So the first thing, it sounds like I'm, sounds like I'm underwater. So I don't particularly care for that. So what I want to do is I want to turn on voice isolation. How's it going? Will here. And before we dive into module zero that shows you how to get the most out of my video workflow, I first want to talk to you about a few housekeeping rules. And that is simply this. This course gives you act. Okay, so I was trying to see if I could hear it changing my voice levels as I talk. And honestly, I don't. Although I should have on headphones doing this, I don't access to my video workflow for 12 weeks. The reason why it's 12 weeks is because I all right, and then I'm going to turn on noise removal. I'm going to, let's see how this sounds. I want to make sure it's not. How's it going, Will here? And before we dive into module zero, that show. All right, so that sounds, it actually sounds better, but I just want to pull down noise removal to maybe 25. I'm going to click enter. And let's put this back over here. How's it going, Will here? And before we dive into module zero that shows you how to get the most out of my video workflow, I first want to talk to you about... Okay, now that sounds good. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, let's see here. If I click right here, copy audio settings. Okay, single, copy audio, audio settings. Now, if I come over to this one, is it easy to paste audio settings? Yes, it is. And if I come over to this one, I can paste audio settings. All right. So, I mean, with this right here. How's it going, Will here? And before we dive into module zero that shows you how to get. All right. So, I like I like the audio. Is it room for improvement? Of course there is. But let me explain something to you. I usually, in order to get my audio sounding halfway as good as it sound now, I use File Filter, which cost me about 600 bucks. Is bait is plugins that you can use inside of whatever you know video editor you want. Not only do I have it on DaVinci Resolve, but I also have it on my iPad and the plugins, which is another couple hundred bucks. And I have to go through each single video, each single audio or plugin, fixing my gate, my noise gate. I have to do my deesser. I have to do my multiband compressor. I have to do my Q3, which is where I'm going in looking for noises, harsh noise sounds. Then I'm using that again to sharpen my voice and bring up some of the high. When I tell you it's a lot of work, it's a lot of work. So to be able to do something like this and get this solid of quality out of it, I mean, I like it. Now, don't get me wrong. I know part of it is the DJI mic that I'm using. I'm, I got a good source going into the camera. I got my camera settings for my amp inside of my camera not really doing much work i'm relying heavily on the audio recorder that's plugged into it so i do understand it's more than just this at hand but i'm telling you this is something that really makes life easy and i like it a lot so now at that point if i wanted to let's say i wanted to let's take a look at this full screen because see i like my background and i like the shirt i just don't like my skin tones i feel like i'm too I feel like I'm too bright. I'm too red. But let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at it and see. All right. So let's go full screen. I could be me. How's it going? Will here. And before we dive into module zero that shows you how to get the most out of my video workflow, I first want to talk to you about a few house. Okay. So I feel like if I could sample it, then that would be great. If I could just sample my skin tones and play around with them, push them around, that'd be great. But since I don't have that ability right now, I would say right here is where I would leave it because at the end of the day, it's not bad. 
It's not bad at all, actually. So I would be okay with this. Now, the next thing I want to do is, let's say I wanted to put something right here. Okay, if I wanted to put something right here, we're going to close out the inspector. We're going to come over to this button right here, and I'm going to grab my Apple Pencil, and let's put, let's put something simple like welcome, all right? And then after that, I'm going to say done. I like the fact that this only go, because this is cut right here, it stops where this is at. I like that. So if we play it. How's it going, Will here? And before we dive into module zero that shows you how to get the most out of my video work. Now, if I didn't want it that long, I could easily zoom in. And right now I'm using touch. That's why you don't, that's why you just see the screen moving. But now we zoomed in, I can click play. How's it play. going, Will here? And before we dive into module zero. And let's zero, say I wanted to stop it right there. I use the space bar to stop it. So let's click right here. And once we click on this, I can just come down here and say ripple delete all that other off. And at that point now, how's it going? Will here. And before we dive into module zero, then, and it's perfect. So I like the, I do really like the ability to write on the screen because if you used to do it back in the day, you know, you got to go to procreate, use a green scheme, write whatever you want to write, record it, bring it over. Then you got to chroma key that green out and you got to play with it just right to get all that green gone. So to be able to just do it here, I mean, it's, it's, it's worth this weight in gold, seriously. And this is one of the things that's not a marketing gimmick because it's actually a feature that a lot of creators use a lot. So it's, 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 it's nice. The last thing I want to show you is over here, which is your Final Cut Pro user guide, video tutorial, service and support. And you can send your feedback. Along here, you have your, right here, you have your undo, you have your redo. Over here, you have your export, so video, audio, you know, current frame, and you also have your Final Cut Pro for iPad project right here. You have your pencil, which is what we just looked at right here. You have your video camera right here. So if I wanted to, you know, record a video or something like that, I could do that with this. If I wanted to flip the camera, I also could do that right there with this. And over here you have your import so you can pull something in from photos or files it's 100 percent up to you and the last thing i want to show you is you also have right here where you can do like your anchor points and things like that and if i click on this you know you get more settings to based on whatever you click on and you can come over here and you have your instant freeze frame which is the part i wanted to show you so you have a lot of features. You have a lot of functionality in Final Cut Pro. You just got to know where to click and where to look. Now, do I think that Final Cut Pro is a solid video editor? Honestly, yes. I feel like I, you know where I feel like this would shine? If I'm doing, let's say, a, a video where I would normally do it on my phone, like let's say a YouTube short or something like that, I feel like this will shine. If I'm doing like a video, creating a video for like my courses, then I feel like this will shine. Where I don't feel like this will shine is where I'm doing YouTube videos, where you know I'm very meticulous about how I want the edits to look, meaning that sitting here trying to cut out all my breaths or most of my breaths or make the video faster on here, it would take some time for me to get used to that. And honestly, I'm not 100% sure that that's something I would do. I don't even do it in Luma Fusion. I quickly grab my MacBook Pro if I have bigger video projects. However, with that being said, if I didn't have a MacBook Pro and I had to pick between DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, and Luma Fusion, which one would I pick? Honestly, I would pick Final Cut Pro only because DaVinci Resolve, that right now is still in its infancy as well. Like if we look at DaVinci Resolve really quickly, DaVinci Resolve is very much so a 100% made for like this right here. I The only way for us to play with this right now is if I sit up and use this. Like I can't, like if I wanna move the timeline, I have to use this up here or I can use this. Now, what I will say with DaVinci Resolve is it is not a touch first experience. So if 
for me, I love that I'm able to use the keyboard shortcuts and it actually works. Not only does it work, but if I do command K, I'm able to come up in here and I'm able to use all my different keyboards shortcuts that I use on my original. So you can see right here, I press W. If I wanted to ripple delete, I press E. If I wanted to ripple delete the opposite way, I press that. If I wanted to do a ripple delete, I just press S. And when I tell you that this is awesome for me, it's awesome for me. So I like this better from the standpoint of being able to color grade and have extra functionality and features. But this also comes with more work, meaning that I have to do all of my, you know, audio in a different app and then pull it into this app and then sync them up and all that other stuff. Whereas with Final Cut Pro, my audio sounds pretty good using just the basic features that Final Cut Pro got right now. So in another year or two, if Apple continue to do the updates like they supposed to, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Now, if we jump over to Luma Fusion right quick. Luma Fusion, honestly, if we look at Luma Fusion right now, you can see this is one of the videos I was, this is the actual current video I was doing. As you can see right here with Luma Fusion, I mean, Luma Fusion, I like Luma Fusion because, you know, I like the fact that everything, I like this right here, that this line remains in the middle and you're moving your timeline to cut which makes it so much faster. So I'm command B right now and I'm easily able to, you know, delete out stuff and all that other cool stuff. So I like that part of it. But as far as like when it comes to color grading, if we, you know, we probably got to pick a different project because this, honestly, I don't think this is going to be a good project to use. So let's come down here to this one. So you can see this video right here and if we come right here, we can see this color come back over here. I'm in the same location. It looks totally different. You see, same exact location, looks totally different. And it's because this right here looks more true to life. Now it is, this right here is a little red and I could try to come over here. And let's say if I click right here and I come over here and come down to, let's say, hue well let's say vibrance now actually we don't want to do vibrance what we want to do is color adjustment and we want to come down to tint which is right here now if i come over here and i start playing with this i could possibly fix it but i would need to have up my waveform to see what i'm doing we can see that the red channel is pretty high but we can see with me bringing that tint down just ever so slightly took a lot of red out the background, but still have some red in me. So if I wanted to, you know, pull it down a little bit more, I could do about right there. And we can see that drastically helps my skin tones, but it also fixes the back. And it's right before everything turns to lime green. So the red channel is still above, but we can see now it's a little bit better and I can actually make it full screen to show you and this is more true to life how's it going will here and before we die this is more true to life what my actual background looks like so this right here is pretty cool but over here with davinci with luma fusion if i double click on this clip right here well let's click on the let's double click on a bigger clip let's so we see right here and we can see that if I come down here to color grade, we can see this is how Luma Fusion do it. I honestly, I've never liked this. So if we just delete that, we can see like this is how it is. So honestly, knowing what I know now about color grading, I really didn't need to, you know, mess with this. I, I could have not done, I could have not done a color grade left it like this and what I could have done is just done a little bit of a touch just grab the original and what I probably could have done is maybe bump up the highlights a little bit maybe or pull down the highlights a smidget but honestly I you can see that warping thing that I'm getting in the wall so I don't want to do that and I probably could have just added in a smidget of contrast just to bring my colors back out. And I 
probably didn't need it that high, probably bring it down to 1.6. And for vibrant, maybe turn it up just ever so slightly. And that's it. That's probably all I needed to do. Now, if we look at this one, we look at this one versus this one, we can see how much of a difference that makes. This is not true to life. This right here is more realistic. But again, when I was doing this, I wasn't as I didn't know what I know now about color grading. I was still finding my way and figuring it out. But we can see now the difference. And if we come back over here to Final Cut Pro, if I had to pick between these three, honestly, my first pick would be if I'm looking for something with speed and I just need to get something done, I'm going with Final Cut Pro all day. If I need something with more features, then I'm going to DaVinci Resolve. And if we look right here, I mean, come on now. Like, you, you literally have a power window. I literally can do all my masking and things that I normally do, and it's 100% viable. And I could do color grades, copy them, save them for later, and paste them again. Inside of Final Cut Pro, I'm honestly not 100% sure that I can do that yet. I'm not, this is very much so a version one. And DaVinci Resolve is a version one too. So don't, you know, let me, I know I get excited talking about DaVinci Resolve, but don't, you know, get it twisted or confused. All of these are in the infancy stages except Luma Fusion. So here's my take on it. I like, I like this. Like, I really, really like it. If you would have asked me this when two days ago when I first started creating this video, I would have told you, Heck, you know, I hate it. I think Apple should be, you know, whatever, shut down because they created an app that's bad. But after playing with it, after seeing where, you know, it stack up and seeing how good it is, I like it. The only thing I will say is they need, they need to work on their keyboard shortcuts because if we look over here, I'm going to close out this inspector, and this is what I hinted at earlier. If we look at, if they look at their keyboard shortcuts, so I'm going to activate this window. I'm going to hold pound the pounds could sign and you can see it says cut is command X however so if I do command X it deletes the whole track it doesn't split it unless inside of here it's another command that says split but when I looked at it I didn't see any other thing that say split up in here so a cut is supposed to just be okay you cut this clip not you delete it and I again I still don't see it anywhere so with it is actually oh okay command b is split okay so that's why reading is fundamental command b is split split and switch to viewer one angle is one split and switch to viewer angle two is two so this is when it comes to you know doing a multi-cam so i mean honestly again this I like it. I didn't realize that delete is command X, but I stand corrected. So long and short of it is I give Final Cut Pro two thumbs up. Now, am I going to keep the subscription that I purchased? Honestly, I'm going to give Apple a shot. And the reason why is because I pay like $50 a year to Final Cut Pro, not Final Cut Pro, Filmic Pro on my phone to be able to use my camera. And I feel like that and this would be an awesome combination for those little quick videos, those prompt to impromptu videos that I want to create just because I want to create it. It's not a lot of pizzazz. It's, you know, sharing my thoughts and things like that. And it's nothing too crazy. I feel like this would be great for that. And I feel like this gives me a place to be able to, you know, sit down, play with the footage, do what I want to do. I could literally go out, record some today, bring it in here, and it makes creating effortless. It makes editing effortless. Now, when it comes to the big two, which is color correction and fixing the audio, it is awesome. When it comes to editing the clips, as long as you're editing the way I showed you, meaning you're splitting and then you're using a ripple delete, that means it's gonna automatically keep your active timeline selected. Now, if you split, split, then you're gonna, it's, it's gonna be cumbersome and you're not gonna like it. So I give this my stamp of approval. Now, if Apple don't continue to do updates like they should, with us being on a $50 a year subscription, if they don't continue to do the updates, they don't continue to bring out new, roll out new features every couple of months, fix bugs every few couple of months, then honestly, 
I'm going to step away from Final Cut Pro, but right now as it stands, with this being version one of it, I want to give Apple a chance and see what they do. I do not own Final Cut Pro on my laptop. I am 100% DaVinci Resolve and yeah, nothing's changing that. So with that being said, that's where I stand. This is my take on it. I hope you enjoyed this quick user guide on how to use Final Cut Pro. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up so I'll know you like it so I can come out with more content just like this one. Till next time. Later.